two very important things by September 9th. One of the things we discovered was that state election directors in the United States, Republican and Democrat, were deleting ballot images. What are ballot images? Ballot, when you take, when you go to the voting booth, you can vote two ways, right? You can vote on paper and it's counted by paper. Probably the best way to do it. The other way is your, your ballot goes put, gets put into a machine. Those machines scan that paper and they make it into an image. Got it? That's called a ballot image. And then that ballot image is run through the technology to determine your votes, right? So the machine is looking for those dots with its AI engine and determining what the votes are. So what is it using? Is it using the paper or the image? It's using the image, right? So the image at that instant becomes a ballot. So we uh, go to the Secretary of State and we said, look, we want the ballot images. And we had a video camera with our volunteers on September 9th. And the individual at the election of, uh, uh, state election official, he says, we don't have those images. We turn that feature off, which means they get deleted. All right. The default setting is save all images. So they had deleted the ballot images. So I had to formally apply for what's called a, a public records request. And on September 24th, we get back emails from the Secretary of State saying, you know, we don't have to save ballot images by state law. Well, this is a federal election. According to 52 USC 20701, which was passed in 1974, you must save all records generated in connection with a federal election. Okay? You can write that down, 52 USC 20701. All records generated in a federal election must be preserved. So I write back to her in an email and I say, uh, can you show me the state law that allows you to get away without saving federal election images? She doesn't write back. She diverts it to sending me some other documents. I said, you have violated federal law. This election is null and void. So I have these four emails. We have about 300,000 followers on Twitter. It's a public official. So those four emails I put up on Twitter. Within hours of putting up those images, that's on September 25th, I'm thrown off Twitter. Now, you have to understand, I'm still a U.S. Senate candidate in a federal election in a write-in campaign in the generals. So just close your eyes and think about what I'm saying here. A United States Senate candidate is thrown off Twitter in the middle of his federal election because he put up, he exercises free speech rights, which were critiquing the election official. And what was the platform of our campaign? Stop election fraud. Okay? So our entire campaign is stop election fraud. We're running on a campaign against election fraud. We had held four major protests at the Secretary of State. We expose the fact that they're violating federal law, and we get thrown off Twitter. Okay? Let that sink in. Remember, the, the highest protection of the First Amendment was political speech. Citizens United which was a very important case law, which was Citizens United versus FEC, the Supreme Court ruled that the 30 days before the election are the highest protection of speech. It doesn't matter whether you're, even you're lying or not, whether even you're saying false stuff against your candidate. You are allowed to have open speech. All right, so that happens. I try to find a lawyer. Now, this is what happened. Mike knows these guys at Lead Stories. A quote-unquote bogus Alan, fact. Alan Duke and Martin. Martin. Yeah. He's over in Belgium. We talked about that earlier. These are the guys that put covers over you on Facebook and Twitter. What they did to absolute proof, and they were contains porn and nudity. These are the guys. These are the terrible people that have done this to our country. Alan Duke and Martin that lead stories. And yeah. this is where I found out. Um, this is where we collaborate on that. So, so lead stories is. So I had put up a tweet which was going viral at that, right before that. So just, there's, so there's a tweet that I did which has these four emails exposing the state election director. Right before that, I had done a tweet which said millions of ballots dash ballot images were deleted. This organization, Lead Stories, does a hit job on me. Oh, Dr. Shiva's lying, no ballots were deleted. I never said ballots. I guess they don't know how to read English. I said ballot images. Now. One of the interesting things they did in that story was they said they interviewed the Secretary of State, and the Secretary of State 
had said they had contacted Twitter to, said, to silence me. Let me repeat that again. Government official had contacted Twitter to silence a U.S. Senate candidate. Got it? First Amendment, I guess they didn't read it. All right. So when I saw that, I said, I have a serious First Amendment case. I can't go after Twitter. They're a private actor. I don't know enough about election laws, but I do know something I learned in second grade when I came to this country. It was called the First Amendment. No lawyer in Massachusetts wanted to take on the swamp, so I had to do it. So I had to learn case law. I filed my own lawsuit. On October 30th, we had a hearing in federal court. Hey, Dr. Shiva, there was one more thing, though. Yeah. They said that they had talked to you, didn't Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, lead he's story, missing a piece there. The lead, liar lead stories. You yeah, lead story it. said they had talked to me. They never spoke to me. Completely lied. Okay. So we go, So on October 30th, I get a, my day in court. In fact, there were two lawsuits. One for monetary damages, and one I requested the judge, Your Honor, I'm in. A, I'm, I'm running for office. This is my megaphone. Put me back on Twitter now. In that October 30th hearing on 2020, which was only supposed to be for 45 minutes, it ends up going for four and a half hours. In those four and a half hours, we were the first to discover in the world, in cross-examination, when the judge asked the state election director's communication director, so how did you decide to contact Twitter to throw off Dr. Shiva? She goes, we have a trusted Twitter partnership. The government has a trusted Twitter partnership. That means you and I carry the credit union card and the government has an Amex black card. Okay? So they, in fact, we discovered they have a partner support portal, a VVIP portal. Government has a portal to big tech Twitter. So when I put up those four tweets, the government contacted Twitter using their special capability to silence a United States Senate candidate, a U.S. citizen. All right. So the judge was appalled at this, and he gave us all the terms of our preliminary injunction. He said, you will no longer stop, con you will stop contacting Twitter. But we also discovered something more interesting. It gets even more deeper, as Mike said. We discovered there's an organization called the National Association of State election directors. Write it down. NASED. This is a classroom in the First Amendment right now. Okay? National now you're all Association need this stuff for your states. of State Election Directors, which is a government association of all 50 state election directors. So when I exposed the state election director, not only did she contact Twitter through their partnership, she picked up the phone and contacted NASED. NASED used the force of 50 state election directors to also contact Jack Dorsey. So I was targeted not only by one state election director, by 50. So the net of it was the judge in that hearing said more than likely Dr. Shiva will prove state action was involved. What is state action? That means Twitter is no longer a private actor. They are coupled with the government. Where government ends and Twitter begins, nobody knows. So that was, so I was, it was a big victory. Tucker Carlson didn't report on this because Tucker watches which way the wind blows, okay? Tucker does not report the news. He watches a year later when it's valuable to Shame report on, on stuff. Fox. Shame on Fox. Shame on Fox. Shame on Fox. Yes. And I think it's important to understand that, okay? It's important in life to do the right thing at the right time, not when you get eyeballs. So anyway, that was October 30th. After I had done Mike's show, I believe in late January, on February 1st, I did a lecture. I was back on Twitter from November 3rd to February 1st. And remember, Twitter never touched me. I've talked against forced vaccinations. I've talked against GMOs. But on February 1st, once again, I shared those four email screenshots, once again exposing the state election director of Massachusetts. And within 17 minutes, I'm deplatformed. Okay, 17 minutes. We go back into court again on February 4th. And this time, the judge says, I cannot give you complete relief until you bring Twitter into my courtroom. Remember, we never went after Twitter. We weren't that, frankly, naive. We went after the government. With all the hype against big tech, in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you a diagram. 
what everyone's going to realize is it's government tech. It's not big tech. It's government tech. Hey, hey doc, Dr. Yeah. Shiva, one thing in there, because I want to I want to hammer uh, lead stories for a second. Remember, and then there, during this time, I felt, you know, we had a common thing there. I was calling lead stories about something they had covered up in the summer with my friend Ben Carson, that he had said that he had took a therapeutic and he had really said that. And it went on a show, and the and the guy, this guy on this show, actually, and uh, had said, yeah, it was in the news that Ben Ben had taken this. So he said, yes, he took this. They took down his whole platform. Lead stories did the fact checkers from Facebook put false information. I reached out to Ben. Ben actually then called to lead stories, Alan Duke, and they go, oh, I guess you did take it. So they took the story down. But guess what? That guy lost 1.5 million followers on Facebook. 1.5 million. There, they put up the fake thing on there because he had really taken it. So I was calling lead stories about that. And then Dr. Shiva joined me, and now what happened there? Yeah. So, so what happened now is the judge now is even more concerned because he feels, you know, I told you not to contact Twitter. What they had done on September 25th was when I was targeted... The algorithm was set up that any time I shared those four email screenshots, I would be deplatformed. So what happened on February? So on February fourth, we went back into court, and the judge said, "Again, it's me against lawyers. No lawyers. Find out that's actually it was a good thing." Um, so on May twentieth, the judge gives us the opportunity, and he brings in Twitter. So it's me now against three of the state election, three, three of the Secretary of State's lawyers in Massachusetts three of Twitter's lawyers from Wilmer and Hale, one of the leading law firms in the world, and one from Nasset. So seven lawyers against me, okay? The night of May 19th, so May 20th is the lawsuit, I'm trying to figure out what is this Twitter trusted partnership, okay? We have filed like 35 briefs. Nowhere in there is there anyone talk about it. And lo and behold, this is why I believe there's a God, on the midnight of May 19th, I find four documents on a server. Doug, can you bring that up? These documents are called playbooks. P-L-A-Y-B-O-O-K-S. Okay? Doug, you can just scroll down. So that's a playbook. It's called the Election Influence Operations Playbook. Okay? Part one. And Doug, go down. Stop right there. Go up, Doug. It's, it, was, it was published at the Harvard Belfer Center. Go down, Doug. Go to the... Um, and this playbook is, stop right there, Doug, calls influence operations. What is influence operations? This playbook defines the theoretical framework of censorship in the United States. It says an influence operator is anyone who has influence to change the narrative. Go down. Go down, Doug. So right there, you see, go, go up, Doug. Keep going up. Go up. You see a woman right there from the National Association of State Election Directors. Go down. A woman called Amy Cohen. Go down. And if you scroll down, there's people called Michelle Tassinari, who is a state election director. Okay? Go down, Doug. No, no. No, D Doug, you have the wrong one. Anyway, and go down, Doug. All the way down. Scroll down. Oops. Go up. Twitter legal. Go up. Right, oh, you went too far down, Doug. Slow down a little bit. Right there. Twitter legal. So these are books authored by elected officials in Twitter legal, which defines a theoretical framework of who is an enemy of the state in this country. Okay? Go to part two, Doug. And part two is a manual for how... Doug, go to part two if you can bring it up. Part two is a step-by-step -step manual. Okay? Doug will bring it up, which defines how you detect an influence operator. Step one, you have to assess them. Doug will bring up the diagram. Okay? Go down. And this is a handbook. Go down. No, no, Doug, just go down. Scroll down, please. Okay. Doug will bring it down. But the handbook says, step one, how you identify someone, how you assess their level of threat for misinformation, disinformation, how you watch them, and how you will track them forever if they're a high-level security threat. There it is. Okay? Doug, go down. Okay? There it is. Okay? So it says, four stages of countering influence operations. This is not against Russia or China. This is against United States citizens. Okay? Go down, Doug. 
So there it is. So it has a step-by-step -step process, how you identify, how you assess. Doug, go down to where it says high, medium, level, severity. And when you follow, follow, follow this playbook, I was identified as a high level, high level severity. Okay? Go down, Doug. So it has, it gives how you identify keywords on people. Go down. How you assess them. Document, you know, how you, go down, Doug, one more. Yeah, right there, stop. So I had an established voice, credibility, MIT, PhD, high volume. Go down, Doug. Next. Right, nope. Go back, go back. Right there. Nope, you had it on high, stop. So high, medium, low. If you're a high level security, you're put on a watch list for the rest of your life. Okay? And you, so what occurred on September 25th? It was triggered and they were following me all the way until the next four tweets came. All right, so we present this to the judge on May 20th. The judge is frankly, you know, concerned. And on May 21st, he said, and it's all, by the way, all of this is public. He said, at 10.30 a.m., this hearing went on for two days now. He goes, this lawsuit more than likely will be a law school exam in every constitutional law class. And he asked me if I wanted a attorney because you've done this all on your own. All right. Doug, bring up the long fuse report. So the next hearing was set for July 15th. Between this point and July 15th, we find this long fuse report, which was published on June 15th. By the way, every major news organization should be carrying this. This is what, what Mike's doing is a huge service right now to the world. Okay? So the long fuse report, this is a 300 page report. The first report is a handbook of how you censor people in the United States. This report was written on June 15th by Stanford guys showing how great the playbook worked. In this report, I mentioned 22 times, I am considered the top six repeat spreader and it validates that I was being surveilled since June of 2020. Dr. By Shiva, 20, Dr. 20, Shiva, that censored report then when you were the highest level, so you're talking that the like Facebook fact checkers, like Lee oh, right, yeah. Story, they work with those guys. They, the they, they, they work with Lee Stories. The report confirms. They work with them. They, they are part of their infrastructure. So, Doug, go to page that page I wanted to show you. Now, this report, Doug, go down to that page with the First Amendment. Stop right there. Stop. I want everyone to read this. Elections in the United, these guys are upset that America is a decentralized country. They are upset we have the First Amendment. They say it in black and white. It says, elections in the United States are highly decentralized. Isn't that the way they're supposed to be? Over 10,000 individual jurisdictions covering state, county, and municipal levels are responsible for administering the vote on election day. Voter registration systems and databases uh, are centralized at the state level. Vote casting, in contrast, is organized at the local level. There is no centralized support to aid the vast number of jurisdictions in identifying and responding to emerging election-related misinformation, disinformation. They're upset there's not one centralized organization that can crush, quote-unquote, misinformation. They are upset that things are decentralized. Everyone following me? Doug, go down to the next page. And look what it says here. It goes, this is especially true for elections. Doug, you don't have to do that, I can read it. This is election, especially true for election disinformation that orig originates from within the United States, which would likely be excluded from law enforcement action under the First Amendment, and be, okay? And not appropriate for study by intelligence agencies restricted from operating in the United States. As a result, during the 2020 election, local and state election officials who had strong partner on ele election voting systems and overall cybersecurity efforts in CISA. This is saying that we need to create a centralized infrastructure to subvert the First Amendment because if you're a foreigner, you can watch them, but you cannot. And it says that what we need to do is we need to create a non-governmental entity to launder censorship. Everyone following me? Okay, 300-page report, and it's looking back at the playbooks. Doug, can you find out where I mentioned? So six people are called repeat spreaders. Highlighted, M myself, Donald Trump, Gateway Pundit, Newsmax, Breitbart, and James O'Keefe. Okay, 
So there they are. These are the people that they have problems with. Doug, go down to the place. When was this published? June 15th. But really? it's looking at what occurred in the last six months from June 2020 to November 2020. Look at that. I didn't even make the top 10. Okay, go down. <laughs> go down. No, go down, Doug, to Shiva Adre. No, Doug, where's the... Yeah, go down. Okay, right there. So they have a whole section on me. So why am I... So this is June of 15th. So when you go through this 300-page report and you combine it with the playbooks... Doug, bring up the image. So in our lawsuit, we... Our lawsuit had evolved from October 30th, where we had just talked about the Twitter partnership. Then we find the playbooks. Then we find the long fuse report. And what this lawsuit shows is the woman that I was critiquing contacted that other woman. But look, at they had created this infrastructure. Doug, zoom in. Zoom into the playbooks. And these people, who are none of them were elected by you or I. Scroll down, Doug. You see that, Doug, scroll in, no, zoom in into the playbooks, right there. They're Republican and Democrat. Do not excuse both parties. They're both part of it, all right? Both of them. So I don't want to hear this, I don't want to hear left-right narratives, okay? Go down. So all of these guys at the Harvard, no, right there, go up. Those are the documents they created, which are the blueprint for censoring speech. Those documents created this infrastructure. The infrastructure is called ISAC. Election infrastructure created by a, hold, held by a nonprofit called for the Center for Inter Internet Security. Doug, go up to the left. Funded by Pierre Omidyar, who's a billionaire, okay? Left guy, but also supported up by the Murdochs, okay? Fox left News. And right. Now, this diagram is not just some random diagram. We submitted it into a lawsuit, okay? But what you see here is these people who you and I never elected laid out the blueprint, which would say that if you're the State Department, if you're state and local officials or Homeland Security, and you have a problem with Mike Lindell or me, you will contact this nonprofit. They will take call Twitter and suppress speech. It's called laundering censorship, okay? It is, they think they're very freaking clever. They, this is the way that you, it was designed to subvert the First Amendment. This is what is going on in this country. It is no longer we have to fight for freedom. We have lost it. The First Amendment has been destroyed. And in our lawsuit, this woman, Stacia Cardilla, who's a deputy general counsel, scroll up a little bit, at Twitter, filed a false statement because she has to show that Twitter did it on their own. You follow what I'm saying? That the government wasn't involved. So she files an affidavit saying on February 1st when we deplatformed Dr. Shiva. We saw his tweet. We had our internal review on February 2nd. On February 3rd, we knocked him off after a three days of review. It was total bullshit because I was deplatformed on 17 minutes at 9:48 p.m. on February 1st. So we submitted that in court. How did they do that? Well, the long fuse report says that they have 24/7 monitoring and four-hour call centers watching us. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. This is the United States of America. And the reason we've gotten this far is because we keep electing, we have selections, not elections, as Mike is exposing today. We have selections, not elections. It is being done by Democrat and Republican. Okay? And so this woman, Stacia Cardilla, the Deputy General Counsel, lied in federal court because I was deplatformed in 17 minutes, not in a three day review. Uh, can you zoom out? What you're witnessing here is the domestic censorship infrastructure that was created against every American. I was a canary in the coal mine, a U.S. Senate candidate running for office. Next time, this will be used against any person running for Congress. Now, why am I sharing with you this? So this occurred to me running for U.S. Senate. But, you know, I'm also, as Mike said, I'm also a Ph.D. in biological engineering. I also have talked about the issues of forced vaccination, that I do not believe that one size fits all medicine, that not everyone should get the same vaccines. In fact, I believe there are many things in nature that are powerful, right? When I put up those tweets, those also get flagged by the same infrastructure. There's also the fact that if you talk about pro-mask or anti-mask, you get tagged. 
So what we've taken is every issue in this country is being operated and run and managed the quote-unquote misinformation and disinformation by a domestic censorship infrastructure. Yes, I invented email. Yes, I created Echomail, other companies. But I can tell you what I'm most proud of is discovering this system. And it took a lot of heat to do this. And it wasn't done by lawyers. Lawyers will not do this. And in fact, where we are right now is we all have to wake up to the recognition that how do we solve this problem? Because if you take any issue, if you take masks, there's a pro-mask issue and an anti-mask. Pro-vaccine, anti-vaccine. Pro-election fraud, anti-election fraud. Pro-big tech, anti-big tech. But if you take any one of those issues and you take what I call a systems approach, we need to go back to a scientific approach beyond left and right. What you will find is that in any one of those issues, that you will find that there is a real problem in the area of masks and vaccines. A real problem is public health. And how did we get address public health? If you go back to the history of this country, it's when we built a movement, a bottoms-up movement, independent of left and right. In the 1800s, American workers rose up for basic infrastructure. In 1886, four workers were hanged in the United States. I want everyone to understand this. 1886, four American workers were hanged for fighting for the eight-hour workday. Everywhere in the world, that was called International Workers' Day. By the 1900s, American people, working people, with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment were rising up. And that's how we solve public health. Fifteen years before the measles vaccine came, 18 years before, 98% of infant mort measles mortality was gone. Why? Because of infrastructure, sanitation, hygiene, all those things, nutrition. And that was because of a bottoms-up movement. And what's occurred today in the elites on every issue, they do not want us to ever address the real issue. They make a fake issue with a fake problem. Or sometimes they actually take a real issue and they make money off a fake problem. That's what's going on, be it election fraud, be it vaccines, and all of these issues. So the, my journey to close out on this began running for US Senate. And what I've learned is that we've lost the First Amendment in this country because Americans have become fat, dumb, and happy. We have forgotten the value of the First Amendment, and we've lost it. That's and right. the fact and that this exists, I mean, just one minute, Mike. The fact that this exists, and the fact that I couldn't find lawyers to really fight for it, and the fact that I had to do it on my own, and the fact that Mike takes so much heat for what he tries to get out there, the fact that all of us do, so shows that we, we have to recognize the only way we're going to win this, and that's what I want to spend the last 30 seconds on. How do we win? The way we win is a bottoms-up movement. You know, it's a bottoms-up movement. Yeah. It's not going to come from the Democrats or the Republicans. It's not going to come from right these here. election systems as long as we have electronic voting machines. We need to go to hand-counted paper ballots. Election Day should be a national holiday. We need to get our young people learning history and civics. We have a very fundamental problem. And it's not going to come from cursing at the darkness. We need to become the light. And we need to become the light by recognizing it's about truth, freedom, and health. Truth, freedom, and health. Without freedom, you cannot do science to get to truth. And without truth, you cannot find out what's good for our bodies or our infrastructure. And what's occurred in this country, they violated freedom with this crap. And that's why we are in this situation right now. And I want everyone to take the last part of my journey. This is my gift. Go to truthfreedomhealth.com. I've created a, a model where I want to teach everyone system science. Pierre Omediar, if you go to his website, there are about 8,000 elites in this world who know system science. They know how to engineer systems to manipulate us. And if we don't learn how systems operate, it's, we're going to be like you know, bows and arrows shooting at people with nuclear weapons. And we're never going to win. We have to go beyond left and right, beyond Republican and Democrat. We have to expose the reality of what's going on. And the only way forward is a bottoms-up movement. We have to get rid of these electronic voting machines. There's no, way, there's no way forward with them. What's your website again, that website? Truthfreedomhealth.com. Everyone go there because it huh? took me 40 years to create the MIT distillation. This I used to teach a course at MIT called Systems Visualization, where my students used to take complex systems and be able to visualize it. This time I had to use it for my own. 
but we have to understand the interconnections of things. As long as we're in the pro-mask, anti-mask. The real issue with masks is you put on a mask, it hurts your mouth microbiome. The real issue with vaccines, it's not one size fits all medicine. The real issue with election fraud is we got to get rid of these electronic voting machines. Not all technology is good. And the real issue with big tech, it's not big tech, it's big government. It's government tech. It's right on. Yes, Jack Dorsey yes. is just a slave to the government. Zuckerberg is a slave. So let's not think these guys, it's the government, Homeland Security, which has created this infrastructure. Thank you. Yeah, isn't that something? So I will say this, great job. And Dr. Shiva, can you, can you, what a hero that he dug in and found out what's behind all this. This isn't just China coming through the machines. There's people, these are domestic actors here that are involved. U.S. citizens. Jack Dorsey, Jack Dorsey, lead stories. These guys, all of these, the, the cover-up. This is the absolute cover-up. And where we start, like you said, the ground up, There, it's our, this is what we're fighting right here. This is the start. When you go to frankspeech.com, over 40 million people have seen this now and getting the word out get a, get his word out how many of you have heard this before you got here this should be all over the news everywhere this should be everywhere in the world everybody should know this every single person should know all the stuff he just told us we'll put his website up there too what's that you can go find every document at winbackfreedom.com it's your sure. site this it's winbackfreedom.com and but most importantly, we're not going to win this if we don't br bridge, we go beyond left and right. All of these issues have solutions. So go to truthfreedomhealth.com. I've taken 40 years, and in two hours, all of you can learn how to rethink about beyond left and right. So go to truthfreedomhealth.com. But most importantly, this infrastructure, this was a labor of love, guys. We have figured out the domestic censorship infrastructure and we have to win back freedom. Yep. And we do that with, uh, with all of our voices. Like today, even though the, the, the mainstream media, all the media is attacking, that by them attacking, we're able to get more and more. I didn't even go. There's so many stories out there right now. Today, I couldn't even get through them all. I'm going, you got to be kidding. Everything okay. from lunch is served, i late, and, you know, I mean, this is the stuff they're trying to do. But the word's getting out all over the world right here at this symposium. And when we come through this, the platform, the frankspeech.com, I was just telling Dr. Shiva, you'll be able to put all the stuff on there of his, of stuff that's out there. It's like a united force to get our word out in spite of them, in spite of your Jack Dorsey. I got, look at my pillow got twicked, kicked off of Twitter. You know why? Because I, I was kicked off my pillow or Mike Lindell's Twitter. I needed to get the news out. I needed to get the news out. This is when they, I wasn't in the news every day for losing. Mike Lindell lost four more retailers. And they go, did you hear about China and them attacking our country through the machine? This went on every day, but they were the bad media would call me. Every day they would call me. Mike, you lost four more. Mike, you lost your personal Twitter. Now, when they lost my Twitter, I didn't tell you this before. When I lost my Twitter, my friends go... And I didn't, and with Twitter, you know, it, didn't, it was no big deal to me. I lost it. I'm going, well, you know, I'll try this one over here. But when I lost it, I'm going, all of a sudden my friends are going, are you okay with the election? I go, what are you talking about? And well, look what you just retweeted. The, they were running my Twitter and retweeting like they were me. Wow. And, and I go, and I go, what? That's, they're running. Jack Dorsey's running my Twitter. So I tried to take it down. I got a text message, or an, I mean, it was an email from Germany. Germany Twitter, and it says, you have violated blah, 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 the Twitter code, and you cannot take this down. So anyway, then a couple of days, I wasn't in the news. And uh, so I go, how do I, you know, what would make the news? Well, if I lost my pillow's Twitter, that might make the news. So I'm laying in bed, it's 1230 at night, and I go, I go, you know, they haven't called me. The media hasn't called me for three days. So I get on Twitter, on my, my pillow Twitter, and I go, here's what, at Jack, why he took down my personal Twitter. And the last thing that was posted on my personal Twitter was a thing from my director of my Lindell Recovery Network.org. Melissa had wrote this beautiful article because she felt bad I was getting attacked every day. So she put this article up. We put it up on Twitter. 
That's what. That's when Jack took it down. Nobody, they couldn't even, he didn't want them to even hear anything good I was doing for the country. By the way, go to LindellRecoveryNetwork.org. It's free for anyone in addiction. It's free, and I believe it's the best online help ever. Let's put that in there. They can say, all, dumb, all Mike Lindell did was advertise. You know. So anyway, I'm laying in bed. It's 1230. So I put that at Jack, and I said, all at, here's why at Jack took down my Twitter. All the bots and trolls are going, take him down, Jack, take him down. And I'm reading this. Now it's 1245, and I'm, I'm typing. I go, he didn't take it down, right? I want to get to sleep because I want the media to call me in the morning. Gets to be 1245. I put on another thing, at Jack, and I said something else. Still didn't take it down. The bots and trolls are, take him down, Jack. All of a sudden, I go, at Jack, we all know you're in on this, and we're looking forward to the day you're put in prison. Boom, he took it down, right? So... The next morning, the next morning, every, it was the number one news story in the world. My pillow lost their Twitter. My pillow lost their Twitter. Yeah, it's, it was the start of hurting my pillow. Yes, but you had, we couldn't, I couldn't get the word out. So they called me out first thing in the morning. Mike, it was the number one news story. Mike, Lind Mike, you lost your company's Twitter, my pillow. Did you hear about China attacking us? Did you hear about Dominion machines? Every, went on all day long for a week. That one was good for a week. That's the way they work. And lead stories, I, I want to go back to them, because they're here, they have a representative here. Lead stories, how horrific, how could you live with yourself when you're Alan Duke and this Martin from Belgium, two of the four owners, and all they do, they decide what to do. Now we just found out, they decide, I thought they were being subjective, they're ordered to do that. Here's the hit people, here's the people we want to destroy, because they're saying things we don't want to hear, is that right? Yeah, I mean, hey, um... Doug, maybe, so if you look at that, when you go through the Long Fuse report, right. it actually lays out their partners. So their partners include media. So if you want to take out someone, you basically communicate you put that to the up? platforms, put the picture to other up. partners such as these media organizations and fact checker organizations. The amazing thing that's happened with the, those people who run our country right now, they don't, they, they're telling you, this is how I'm going to censor you. They don't even care to hide it anymore. That's what's incredible. So the fact-checking organizations, the social media companies, they're all part of this ecosystem. Right. So the playbook and that long fuse report lays it out in black and white how they are going to censor you, how they do it, and it's a manual. So they're... And, that, and you know what? And you think about that. If you're a journalist, I was just talking to CNN up there when they were interviewing me, and then another one, and I said... Do you guys get ordered from Jeff Zucker at, uh, at CNN that you can't go to Dominion and ask him questions or you don't care? You're here trying to hit me on, on the evidence and prove it and prove it. I said, I've already spent millions of dollars proving. I already got that. The only thing I'm doing here is I need to get the word out huh? so that the Supreme Court and everything, when we bring it to them, that they That's will right. look at it. You've got to have okay. them look at it. You've got to get oh, really? the word out to the people. And I said to them journalists, I said, why is are you ordered or why wouldn't you just go over and say hey dominion why are you not why are you hiding what are you hiding why why don't you just solve this and open up machine or router and say here we've been innocent all along because they can't and then i hear why i'm upstairs that they're covering up stuff around the country as we speak this is the absolute cover-up and we see right here if they got there do they have that that big page you had the, the you know, can you put the, up the big page please the page is being hit so many times, we can't even bring up the site. No. Put it up. Put it back up. It's, okay. everyone's, hit, everyone's going to the website, so we can't okay. even get to it now. <laughs> anyway, go to winbackfreedom.com. Well, yeah. so, so anyway, that, that's a good success. The, 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 bottom, the bottom line here is they, they've tried. They tried. I believe this is another thing. This is a miracle we're in that they did all this, this, that the election manifested to this. This all goes back to this last year. It exposed everything. Just think of all this when it happened, and they would have uh, just said, oh, the election, and everything was fine, and we wouldn't have had all those deviations. We wouldn't be here today. And all this stuff that's getting exposed. We didn't know two years ago that Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg and all these people were involved in this stuff and covering things up. We didn't know that all the media, that journalists couldn't be journalists, this all changed, actually changed with Donald Trump. 
when he got put in. I know this because the media, when the media was darlings to me. Look, all the if I would say how many how many people are you hiring today, Mike? Two hundred people. Everyone would show up. ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox. This is the summer of '16, all the way from 2011 when we I was on every channel, every channel. By the way, not just Fox. We advertised everywhere in this country. You couldn't get away from my pillow. And there was the American Dream, ex crack addict now make invents a pillow. Well, they would all come calling. Yeah, what are you doing now, Mike? And they, there they'd be. Well, the summer of '16, after I met Donald Trump in a private meeting for on August 15th. I meet him, I go in there, he says, Mike, you make all your stuff in the U.S. And he goes, I go, yeah, he goes, I'm bringing the manufacturing back. And we talked about my ex-addiction, and he said, I'm going to stop the drugs pouring in. Well, I left there, and I, was just, I couldn't wait to get back to Minnesota and say, hey, I met Donald Trump, you know, I said, and I put out a press release. I didn't even tell him what we talked about, everybody. And for the first time, I was attacked, attacked viciously. All the, the, I put out the press that that was called a racist. I was called things. My friends are going, what? You know, what do you mean? The bots and trolls, they took my pillow from an A plus to an F. I didn't understand it then. But now I do with what he's talking about. They were already putting hits out there to take down, to talk, move, remove, not for Donald Trump not to win. And it didn't matter who stepped in their way. It didn't matter if you were the, some pillow guy. It didn't matter. They, they're out to kill, crush everyone in their way. And, and that's pretty sad. And, it's, uh, and what doesn't make sense is the journalists, with the journalists, the, 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 the journalists that are out there now, I would just ask two things. Why don't you cross over? You, our country right now, is this is it. Do we get one shot at this? If you're a journalist, if you're working for any of these outlets that you, that you can't say, maybe you're getting orders from above, or maybe you're someone out there that with Dominion, maybe an employee that you did there. Now's the time. You want to be a hero? Save our country. Help save our country and come over to being with the people. That's what has to happen here. You're one of these guys on the board telling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're one of the guys on the board up here. You're, if you're feeling guilty, you should because our country will be gone and you're all part of it. If you're Alan Duke for lead stories, fact checkers, a Martin, quit worrying about if my evidence is, is there or not. Quit trying to discredit because two roles were the same. Why don't you try and save your country and say, say I was, you know what, I don't want to be a part of this anymore, this cover up and China attacking our country. So, but Dr. Shiva, what a hero that he found all this on his own. He, he had better things to do, didn't you? Important to understand, you know, I run other businesses, have other, many other things to do, but, um, this was a important, you know, important activity because it's a very small way for me giving back to this country that's given me so much, and it, it, I'm compelled to do that. But there's many other things that you know people like Mike or I could be doing. But you can't. It doesn't matter if you don't have freedom because without freedom, you cannot get to practice science, which gives you truth, and without truth, you can't get to find out what's right for our health. So it's really important to understand that freedom is a basis of even practicing science. So as a practicing scientist, that's one of the things that motivates me because without freedom you can't have debate, you can't have discourse. And the reason the United States uh, is such a great country is because of the diversity of ideas. So what these guys are actually doing is they want to destroy the economy of the United States. Because what it ultimately does is when you constrain, when you censor, you don't have the vibrancy of crazy ideas, bad ideas, good ideas in the marketplace of ideas, and it is from ideas we get great science and great innovation, and it is innovation that gives us wealth. As a data point, the one university called MIT created 33,000 businesses. Those 33,000 businesses generate $2 trillion to the GDP every year. So if you want to follow the money, when you, just, when you censor people and you silence people, you destroy the economy because you destroy ideas and you destroy innovation. And the United States was built on innovation. So where this is really headed to is, yeah, you may, you may have black people, white people, yellow people all hanging out at Harvard, quote unquote diversity, but they're all on the same board talking the same thing, agreeing with the same thing. It's not diversity of skin color, it's diversity of ideas.
And with, without diversity of ideas, you don't get innovation. Without innovation, you don't get health or you don't get wealth. So yeah, that's Dr. What the, Shiva, yeah. could you, I got another five minutes with yeah. you because you said something before. There's, your, there's the thing back up. Yeah. I, when you talk about this censorship, think of where we're at now with just the vaccine alone. Now, you being a doctor and you've looked into that, I mean, is it, what's your thoughts on that? Whether you like it or not, they're forcing people to, to right. make businesses, small businesses that say they have to make a choice whether to follow what these politicians are doing. Could you comment yeah, on that? Yes. So, so if you actually, so from in, in, nine, in 2003, when I went back to MIT to do my PhD, it's in a field called systems biology. And one of the reasons I went back to, to do that work was I was brought up really appreciating natural medicine. Okay, my grandmother was a traditional healer, so I believe in these, I've seen the power of natural medicine. The problem is in Western science, if you can't prove it, they say it's just hocus pocus. So in 2003, when I went back to MIT to, to do my PhD, there was a development called systems biology. In 2003, what we learned was that a little worm has the same number of genes as a human being. Up until 2003, we thought a human being had about a million genes and a worm had 20,000 genes. It turns out us and a worm have only 20,000 genes. So what makes a human being more complex? It's not the genes, it's the interrelationship of the genes and the proteins. So that created a new field starting in 2003 called systems biology. So when I back, went back to MIT, the goal was could you use this new biology to mathematically model the human cell on the computer? So I spent four years doing that. That was my PhD. I created a technology called Cytosolve. So why am I telling you this? One of the biggest things that we learned during, by 2007 was the right medicine for the right person at the right time. There was a new field that emerged called personalized and precision medicine. The big pharmaceutical companies, the way they work is they try to create the same drug for everyone. And what's been happening, how many people, let me ask this question. How many people think pharma companies are, have, have been making money? How many people think they've been losing money? How many people think they've been losing money over the last 10 years? How many people think they've been losing money? Well, no one raised their hands, but let me tell you. Since two, for Pfizer, for example, since 2012 has lost nearly $25 billion. In 2012, they made about $65 billion. And in 2021, they made about 45, $43 billion. So pharma companies have been losing money because what is a drug? A drug is a single molecule that doesn't exist in nature like ibuprofen, Advil. So pharma companies have been losing money. Massive regulation, it takes 15 years to get a drug through the market. You gotta go through testing, testing, testing. Vaccines don't require anywhere near the amount of testing. 17% growth. And you can't sue vaccine manufacturers, all right? Thank you to Ted Kennedy and Orrin Hatch. They passed a law which says you cannot sue vaccine companies. So imagine this, you're, you're, you wanna enter an industry that's highly regulated, you can get sued, which is big pharma, and now there's this industry over here, you can't get sued, you gotta go to a vaccine court, you don't have to even prove the stuff works because it's considered a biologic, not a vaccine. So what's happened is, the pharmaceutical makers have wanted to move into the vaccine industry. All right? That's what's, it's follow the money. So what's happened is, in the last four years, they've executed on that plan. So a multi-trillion dollar industry is burning down called Old Pharma. They need to move into vaccine manufacturing. So that's the first thing, Mike. The second thing from a scientific standpoint is, one size does not fit all. That's what came out of 2007 in systems biology. We need to move to the right medicine for the right person at the right time. What Mike needs to take for his immune health may be very different than what you know, Mark, Mark needs to take versus what I need to take. Our chemistries are different, our biologies are different, et cetera. What they want to do is to give one size fits all medicine. So from a scientific isn't, standpoint- Isn't it true though too last summer when they had all the hydroxychloroquines, I had something brought to me, yep. all these things. I had a friend of mine, very high IQ, and he went out there and it was a, he said there was over 40, 30 things that worked that helped people. Now, is it true that, because this is what I've heard, that in order for them to have an emergency use, 
there, there couldn't be anything else out there that worked. Now this is what I heard, so they suppressed that so that it would only be one thing. And I mean, well, it, it should be, you know, your choice, whatever, whatever you want to do. Well, well, more importantly, Mike, in 2019, to any of the news people, you know, I'm considered one of the leading guys on the immune system in the world. The National Science Foundation in 2019 had me deliver their prestige lecture on the immune system. So if you go back to 1962 when the National Vaccination Act was passed, we had a very two-box model of the immune system. It said, you create antibodies or you don't create antibodies, okay? You have the innate immune system and the adaptive, and that was it, two boxes. So the whole goal of immunization was get antibodies. That was why 1962 Vaccination Act. Well, we know today the immune system is in two boxes. You have your gut microbiome, you have the interferon system, you have the gut-brain axis. We, we have six trillion cells, but we have 300 trillion bacteria and viruses, okay? We are a walking jungle. So the point is the immune system is a very complex system. So it's not just about antibodies. So the entire vaccination model is just boost up antibodies and you're okay. So why, so why would they, if any, everyone's got a choice to have it or not now, what's wrong with that choice? Why do they keep doing, like I was in Nevada and they're offering people money to win a lottery to go take a... Mike, you know. imagine if everyone said everyone's got to buy pillows. Like, you can't live without a pillow, you have to buy a pillow. Pillow manufacturers would love They'd it. They'd all be looking at yeah. me going, uh, that's a bad rule. Right, right. No, no, but what I'm trying to say is, if you try to say everyone's got to get vaccinated, you have just created a wonderful, you know, complete... A monopoly. A monopoly for vaccine manufacturers. So forget all the thousands to tens of thousands of years there are antivirals in nature that have existed. Forget the fact that you have the gut microbiome, which you can beef up, right? Forget the fact that you have the interferon system, which goes and unleashes natural killer cells. There are people who don't have any antibodies, but they have completely strong immune systems. For You're that. saying it could be money behind it because they were losing money there for years. You know, there is. Whoa. <laughs> no, no. The, the bottom line is vaccine industry is growing at 17 percent. Pharma drug industry is crashing and burning. Right. It's the only way out for vaccine manufacturers. They, I mean, pharma, they need to move into vaccines. And think about it. Imagine, Mike, you were in the airplane industry and you didn't have to do testing. If your planes fell out of the sky, you can't sue them. Right. That's what vaccines are. But, but then why would, why would the government be telling, why would they care about that? Well, let's talk about politicians who yeah, funds yeah, yeah. them, okay? okay. I right. mean, <laughs> when you look at this diagram, right. what, what you realize is diagram. where government ends and tw where Twitter begins, nobody knows. Where government ends and where Moderna begins or where Pfizer begins, nobody right. knows. Right That's right. what we've Thank actually created. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sure, Shiva. I want him to put in there because he's knowledge of everything. This a hero. He is a hero. You're going to see a lot more of him. And uh, thanks, Dr. Thanks, Mike. Okay. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. You. Um, you guys, awesome. He's a hero. He's Thank a hero, you. everybody. Absolute hero. He's a hero to our country. He uncovered okay. that. I'll be over there. Yeah. Thank you.